we are getting ready to go on our ride. Pat just told me that since we drove seven hours to get here and seven hours home, 14 hours to drive for a one hour ride, that we are getting a free razor. That's malarkey. All right, it's 6.30 in the morning on a Saturday and we're dressed in the car, which is painful in itself. It's pretty dark, you probably can't see us very well. Here, there we go. Can you see us now? Can you see me now? Not that you necessarily need to see you me. You don't need but... to see us. I'm just... Anyway, what's going on? Um, we're getting ready to go. We were, we're the first two people to be ever invited to ride the new Razor Pro. The first two people to ever drive the Mr. Razor Pro R. Mr. Razor okay, maybe. called me. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Razor or Pro R? Mr. Polaris himself. Okay. John C. Polaris. Yeah, yeah. Called me and said, hey, Dandy. And then, boom, here we go. All right, let's get real. We're tired. Okay, we're but no, to... honestly, we're going to. We're yeah. going to go to the Pro R event. Um, On behalf of Clausen Motorsports. Clausen Motorsports. Yeah. Which is where I work. Yep. And they're awesome ride people, and so we are in the first like a wave of people that are getting to ride this new car. So we're yep. super stoked about it. We'll report back to you guys with all of our findings. to hot mineral spa it's funny we have a car with a built-in gps but we still just use this guy i don't know why it's i like it because we're it using it. all right we're going we're pro going. r pro r we're driving the pro r it's i mean they just hit the streets it just hit the streets doesn't even hit the streets when does it when can someone actually buy one do you know i don't work there anyway so <laughs> you know they just announced it, that it exists we'll find out we'll have that info by the end of the video yeah, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go drive it right we're now. We're gonna go drive it and talk to the Polaris engineers who are apparently out there. Subway. Alpa. Alpa Subway. We're gonna get. What are we doing? I what time know. is this? Uh, what time is this? Uh, seven fifty-nine a.m. We're eighty miles in at seven fifty-nine on a Saturday. day. Eighty Alpa. miles in, not even eight o'clock in the morning yet. That's uh, you know. We're gonna stop and pee. So we're on. We're on a decent schedule. <laughs> Um, so look at that chicken now. Oh, it doesn't look good to me anymore. That looks real washed out. When it's good, it's great. When it's not, it's bad. Look at the fog, you guys. Oh, People yeah. in other states, this is our. Uh, this is nothing, but yeah. well, you know, this is something. Yeah, like, on a really foggy day in this part of the air, Tule fog. You wouldn't be able to see that gas pump over there. Yeah, if you look up Tule fog, literally that first gas pump might be hard to and see. And it's T U L E. Is how you spell Tule. Tule. So this we do have a dense fog advisory. It's been every truly morning. Truly, birds. But we're, okay, this is, we got to go. We're just really we're, This tired. is random. Is. But we're going to go drive. First time ever anybody on the whole planet has driven a Pro R that was us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was us. I see what you did there. Okay. So we're down to 230 miles to go. It's what, a 400 mile journey? Yeah, just, about that. Just a little over 400 miles. So we've gone 170. Yeah, which is pretty freaking rad for us. 180, and it's only glad, I don't know. 930. 930 in the morning? Yep. All right, so 163 miles to go. And then we're there. And then we are planted firmly behind the all new redesigned chassis and a new bucket seat behind the wheel of a, I'm so cheesy, the Pro, the new Razor Pro R. We're gonna ride all the different types of kinds, vehicles. All right, look at that. Look at all that salt and sea in the Jeepus. That's a lot I'm of a, sea. It, it looks like, you know, from the screen I'm looking at, it looks like you can't see that, but I'm sure you can. Uh, 21 miles to go, and we're gonna drive the first people on the entire planet that are us. If the planet consisted of only the two of us, we would be no. definitely this, the first two people to drive. The first two people on the planet that are us to drive this. True. Hi. We're here. We're we're here. I we're here. Let's we go made do it. this. I yeah. I caught I just pee? I caught a glimpse. Look right right behind us. See it? Can you see it? I caught a glimpse. A glimpse. A glimpse. I caught it. 
I got a glimpse. Glimpsing and glamis. I caught a glimpse of one right over there. Check it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go find out what the deal is, and we'll come back and get the big camera and show you the show you the cars on the show big you camera. all the cars on the big camera. What we're looking at right now is going to be the 2022 Polaris Razor Pro R. This is the new with the new dynamic TV. This is going to be um, kind of a game changer, I think. Right. We're talking 74 inches wide. Everybody wants that bigger car. This is a sand beast. I can already tell you that. This is 74 inches wide. Um, look at the shocks. Look at everything, how it's set up, guys. You see any differences here? We yeah. are talking about a 225 horse out of the box. Uh, Four-cylinder, 2.0 liter. Um... It's a whole different beast. I can tell you just glancing at it. Hey, Pat McCarroll, Polaris, uh, Director of Product Planning for Razor. Awesome. Boom! And he's going to give us like a real in-depth walk around because he knows that we're OG Polaris uh, owners. Otherwise, nobody else gets this kind of treatment. <laughs> we got David in the back right there. The back. Yeah, we lost Billy and Spencer. They're walking over there. See? What did I tell you? You got it. I don't know enough to be involved. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know enough to be involved. All right. All right. Let's talk All right. to Pat. All right, so really, uh, as we look at the all-new Razor Pro R, there was three pillars we were going after here. Power, strength, and control. And we'll start the power story in the back. So if you look at the back of this motor, we've got this all-new ProStar Fury 2-liter engine. So first time we've ever put a four-cylinder motor, 2-liter uh, displacement, kind of some of the classic ProStar tenants. So dual-level overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. Uh, and a lot of people have asked us, like, did you just take a slingshot engine and drop it in a Razor? Uh, and the answer is no. This one's quite a bit different. Uh, on the outside, some of the things you can see that are different, we got a unique exhaust for Razor, so four into two into one, center mounted can with a center mount outlet. Uh, we've got a unique intake manifold, so kind of a log style with a 62 millimeter contour bore throttle body right in the front there on the passenger side. Um, looking back, we got a 1700 watt alternator on this thing, so tons of power to power your vehicle and accessories. Uh, we add a cover in the Razor application versus Slingshot as well, and it's a stretch tension belt, so there's no extra idler wheel on there that you got to worry about. Right. Um, other things you can see, simple maintenance, so you got your oil fill or check here, the fill's on the top of the valve cover, and the uh, oil filter. Oh, what? Sorry. Right here. That's a, no, that's awesome. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Because I've done some oil change videos in the past. It won't say when or who, where, oh. what kind of car. Well, here's the good news. When you drop your oil filter, it doesn't pour all over your engine Yes. Anymore, right? I that's a big one. Easy that's what one. happened to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's real. Yeah. Um, on the stacked oil plate cooler here, so this is actually where we transfer heat from the oil to the uh, liquid coolant. We add that uh, more stacks, make that a little thicker on the razor application. Okay. Uh, we run a 10 degree cooler uh, thermostat on the slingshot or on the razor versus the slingshot as well. Um, and where the engine mouse to the clutches, there's actually a unique flex, flex plate and dampener system so that we can reduce some of the torque pulses going into the clutch. Okay. Uh, when you get down to the inside of the motor, then this is where a lot of the changes you can't see happen. So on the top end, uh, we've got unique cam grinds for the Razor, and we actually run higher compression pistons. So that's what allows us to build 225 horse. As we get down to the bottom of the motor then, this has got a unique oiling system. So it's set up for high angularity in the Razor application. So it's a lot different than what a slingshot on the road would use. We've got a scavenged oil system. Basically, it pulls all the oil back into the pump. So even when you're at high angularity, we don't starve that oil pump. OK, which who would ever be at high angularity? I heard you're not supposed to side hill or anything in these. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're rock crawling. Um, it happens. No, I'm just kidding. You're gonna, you're gonna hit some angles. <laughs> you might be at an angle. Yeah, you might, might, be, be, at, might be at an angle. Uh, no, we like to keep all four down. That yeah. was, uh, Rubber not, side down is a good good place to be. That was not, um, and I was not advocating for that. I was just saying occasionally, just for a second. And then occasionally, you're... like if you're on a dirt bike, you might be on two wheels. Exactly. Yeah. Or the front end. No, front tire, if so you're on a dirt bike. Okay, so two wheels dual sport That's even okay let's go that's what i said okay um so a sweet oiling system down in the bottom end um we've also got some plates to block off the crank so it's not slinging through oil so that we can we're not robbing horsepower that way as well um so other things you can see on the top of the motor uh coil and plug so there's four separate ignition coils through one for each cylinder mounted right on top uh one injector per cylinder as well and it's a deadheaded rail so no return line on this one so fuel comes from the tank to the rail stays up there uh, one of the other things you see, there's a coolant hose right up here. It's a vented head, so you can see that comes right off the top of the valve cover. Uh, the real reason that's there is when you got a machine that's running hot and you park it, we can actually vent some of that heat so you don't get that heat so building up in the top of the engine. I was wondering how you guys are doing all that. Yeah, so your Pro XP actually did the same thing. Turbo R does that too. Um, but it helps not only with heat soak, but recovery time. So when you start it back up, this thing's right at instant uh, operating temp ready to go. Okay. Now let me ask you a real quick question while we're back here looking at this. You keep talking about ways that you're, you know, you've done 
on different things to kind of take away from that horse pair of raw that everybody yep. complains about. So number wise, I know it's really seat of the pants, but number wise, like numbers are the numbers. Yes. Horsepower to the crank versus horsepower to the wheels. Is there any difference in the loss that a typical motor is experiencing? Or no, no? It's, okay. it's pretty similar yeah, it's efficiency just, in okay. that regard. Okay, yeah. but still, so, but you're making more so to start off with. So that's good. Okay, I'm just wondering. Yeah, so we're making 225 horsepower. Uh, and right around 163 foot pounds of torque out of this. So the torque is wow. way higher well, than torquey and little. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's like me. Um, <laughs> so moving forward up to the uh, clutches on this rig. So I talked about that, uh, the fact that we've got that flex plate and uh, damper in there. That allows us to actually move the clutch away from the engine a little. So you can see we've got this intake duct that actually flows air to the back side of that primary clutch. Oh, and you, like you said, you tell you. He told me this earlier. So you guys at the primary and secondary are spaced yes. further apart. They are. So it's a 12-inch center distance between the two versus 10 and a half. Okay. And we're also pulling air in from the hood uh, up this duct. And then that one comes over the outside of the secondary. I was wondering. So, so when, we, when we talk about this dual clutch path cooling, basically what we're doing is pulling air to the back side and the front side of the clutches so that we can help cool both sides of the belt better. So we get a lot better uniformity across the surface temp of the belt instead of having one side that's running hotter and one that's yeah, it's cooler. It's a longer belt and a wider belt. You got it. So it's a stronger belt, doesn't have to rotate as many times. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice setup. As far as the clutches are concerned, we've also gone to wider ratios. So we've actually grown the diameter of both the primary and the secondary. Okay. That's also allowed us to do things like put bigger weights in, bigger rollers, bigger buttons. Uh, visually, since you guys are filming, the one thing I will tell you, there will be a stainless steel plate that goes on the sides of the towers here uh, to help with but button longevity and wear uh, to give you a little better durability over the long term. Okay. One of the other slick things about this, we actually build the tool for spreading the secondary into the clutch cover here. So you don't oh, have to... <laughs> You don't have to lose it. So you don't have to lose it. It's got a home. Yeah, so if you ever do have to swap a belt, you got the tool you need right there. If ever. If we do. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we've been running our demos all week. We haven't touched a belt That's on a single awesome. unit. So, okay. And it turns out people are running pretty hard out here. So, yeah. um, One thing I will note as well, this is a, an out-of-date clutch cover on this one. Um, so you can see we've got these toolless half-turn fasteners. Um, so all the ones on the bottom that are harder to access will still have this, but the five across the top will actually have a bolt and not go Okay. Um, as we keep going back on power transfer, we'll head back to the driver's side here. Um, so the transmission is located right behind the uh, driver's seat. That's this uh, this case right here. Uh, pretty standard park reverse neutral low high gearbox on this one. A couple cool features that aren't on any other Razor. This has actually got a peak torque limiter built in. So going up to the front drive, there's something that looks like a small, like almost like a mini wet plate clutch out of a bike. Okay. Um, so kind of stack friction and steel discs. And really what that's in there for is if somebody has like a power on landing on the front end, it'll clip the torque pulse to try and protect the front prop shaft and front drive from that impact. It was help not break your car. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So people understand. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that's different on this, uh, beyond the overall design, so we've upgraded the gears and the bearings in this to handle the power. Uh, we actually have a different throttle uh, shift cable linkage story on this one. So you'll see there's two cables going back to the shift sector here. Uh, and these are pull-pull cables. Instead of having a single push-pull, where it kind of comes into a bell crank arm, on other razors, when you get toward high or you get toward park, it gets a little harder to pull. Yeah, it does. And the nice, part, yeah, the nice part on this is because this is a circle now, you get uniform shift effort across all the Gear. So it's as easy to get into neutral as it is the higher part. I'm, that's kind of exciting to me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> right? It's a simple thing, right? Oh, well, God, it really is. Yeah. Uh, next thing coming back on power flow, there's a short drive shaft that runs back to the rear drive. Uh, so we've got a, uh, a 410 reduction on the back. Um, so it's a 10 tooth uh, pinion and a 41 tooth ring gear. Um, so that's a lock spool. So both tires are driving, much like every razor that you've had in the past. Yeah. Um, coming out on the shafts, we did beef up the shafts, uh, so stronger bars, stronger yeah. joints, and we run a higher temp grease in the uh, CV housings as well to handle the power level of these okay. machines. Uh, moving up to the front drive, this one's actually got uh, the wrong front drive in it, but if you check out the unit over there, uh, you'll notice that there's actually three positions on the switch for the front drive. So all the way down is two-wheel drive. When you go to the middle, it's going to be 4x4 four four with an open diff in front, and all the way up is going to give you a full locker. Now the cool thing on these Pro R's is that the rear drive ratio and the front are exactly the same, so it's a true four-wheel drive with one-to-one -one ratio. So all four wheels are spinning at the same speed. Okay. So really nice for doing like slow technical riding, or if you're out in the dunes in Glamis and you're racing up the hill, throw her in four-wheel lock, get all four wheels pulling, and you can race up. Wait a minute, who would ever race in Glamis? Well, speaking of that, if you stay here, I'll go across the unit and talk, uh, talk at you. 
but there is a neat switch here on the dash. Race mode? Uh, there is, in fact, a race mode. Oh. Um, so these are uh, going to be your throttle drive modes here. Oh my god, you're going to go flag over here. Yeah, we'll start in the middle on rock mode. Okay. And this one's going to be really good for slow speed technical riding, where With you want to where you want to have a lot of throttle motion, yeah. um, but not have the vehicle like get too fast or, or go too quick on you. Yeah. If you flip that switch down, that's going to be sport. That's going to be much like any razor you've had in the past. Right. And when you flip it all the way up, that's your race mode. So as you start tipping into the throttle pedal, the engine's going to spool up quickly. Um, one of the other things I guess I didn't mention that's also different at the bottom of this motor, we do run a lighter weight lower inertia crank. Um, so it's set up for high, high rev and application of the Razor with the CVT. So, you know, this thing's happy running, you know, up around 8,000 RPM all day. Okay. So. Can I ask you a question on the race mode? Yes. So, is it just tightening the suspension and all that, or is it does it deliver any more power? No. So, in the throttle modes, um, in the rock mode, we actually do limit the top amount of power that you can produce. In the sport and the race, you can get full power out of either of those modes. Okay. But this switch is really all about how that pedal commands torque from the engine and how quickly it ramps up. Tell me about this. Button. That button, the uh, red X button, uh -huh. the dynamics button. Yeah. Uh, so anytime you hit that and you can hold it down as long as you want, that'll take all four corners of the shocks to full firm. Now why would you want to do that? Um, couple reasons. When if your husband goes, oh, please, and then he, yeah, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you're going fast and maybe you see a washout or a G out coming, that's a good spot to hold okay. that down. The other place that a lot of the suspension does, all four corners full firm. Uh, you can bottom out when you hit bottom. No G out. Yeah, the other place that it's handy is actually when you're going slow in the rocks and maybe you got like a short shelf that you're coming down off of. Yeah. Uh, and you want to be able to stiffen that up to let the front wheels land so and go just through. Hold it. that button, come down off the shelf and then let go as well, you come down. You got it. Yeah, so good both for high speed and low speed depending okay. on, on where you're riding. Okay. So from a power delivery perspective, remember we kind of said power, strength, and control what we're going to talk about. Yep. You can see there's a lot of upgrades on this region. Yeah. Um, next thing we'll talk about is strength. So we kind of went through the driveline stuff already. Um, but the reason this unit is kind of nice to see is that you can actually see the one-piece mainframe. So there's no bolted joint here uh, making like a front and back half. And the four-seater is the same way. It's a single-piece chassis. Uh, the other one on the roll cage, this is also for the first time ever, we've got a one-piece fully welded cage on this. Uh, you can see it's big two-inch tube, uh, it's high-strength steel. Uh, it's the stoutest cage we frankly ever and made on a razor. Looks, it's yeah, the best it's, looking razor yeah, was, cage out there. I'm going to tell you right now, the Proline has the <laughs> best looking cages on a razor. If they come stock, you don't have to do anything. Correct, yeah, and they actually ship fully assembled like this to the dealerships, uh, oh, so they're God. ready to go. Oh, that's awesome. That's yep. the best work for my guys. Okay. Yeah, so other things you'll notice, so the joint in the front here is pretty standard to what most other razors, two bolts going through. But if you look at the B and the C pillar, we've actually got a Morse taper going on. So if you've ever seen uh, on other razors the inside of a drive clutch and what a crankshaft snout looks like, mm -hmm. the cage is kind of like the snout on the crank and the mainframe is kind of like the, the receiver side on the clutch. Okay. And then there's a single bolt that goes up just to clamp that together. Okay. So it makes for a really strong joint. We're not reliant on the, uh, the side tension of the bolts to hold that thing together. So it gives us a lot of strength between the cage and the mainframe on the Pro R. Um, other things, if we move up to the front of this machine, uh, you can actually see just how strong the suspension is. I know. Um, and the handy thing is, I got a couple arms sitting on the table. Beefy. Yeah, I'll hand you a lower control arm here. You got oh, it? Oh, God, babe. And I've carried a lot of these at work and also at home and also in the sand. <laughs> That's true. So wow. we'll, we'll trade you out here. Babe, you've got to try hold one of these. Let me see that camera. He knows for sure. Oh, wait, no, wait. Let me trade out first. I got to hold compared right. to the little baby one. Yes. So the upper arm still built plenty durable, no, but quite a bit lighter than the Oh, lower. man. Yeah, quite yeah, a bit long, one Quite a bit lighter, but definitely heavier than any that we've had. That's oh, the yeah. that's the smaller one. Yeah. Yep. Fill that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might have helped change a couple of these out for people. <laughs> Somebody, somebody that These ran are out of definitely, talent. yeah. So the reason that lower arm is so heavy on the Pro R is because we're actually running the, the shock down to the lower arm. Okay. Uh, which means we got to put all the suspension load strength into this lower arm. Right. So the nice part about that is it's a little more tolerant of trail debris, right? So if somebody comes across, you know, a rock or a root or a stick, you got a little more strength in that lower arm that can withstand that that type of uh, impact. Okay. Yep. Um, other things strength-wise that you'll see on the front end. We actually have an all new power steering system that's built into the steering rack that you can kind of see right back through here. Uh, so we can actually give you more assist now. 
And we're also allowing replacement of the uh, tie rod as a service part, so you don't have to replace that whole thing if somebody bends a tie rod. Awesome. Moving out to the wheel end then, we've got a unitized hub bearing assembly in here. Saw that. So the bearings are actually pressed into the hub, uh, so you don't have to worry about pressing new ones out or putting new ones in. You just oh. unbolt that whole thing, bolt a new one in. Okay. It also makes it a lot easier for uh, doing any half shaft reassembly because the torque that you got to hit on this nut isn't nearly as high. Yeah. But we can't do this freezer and fire yeah. trick anymore if you don't have to. Uh, that was Oh, that's very Sorry, moving on. Moving on. Uh, we do have a five bolt hub as well, so we got one more bolt to be able to hold the wheel on. Uh, it's a five by uh, four and a half inch or 114.3 millimeter bolt circle. Okay. Uh, and this top hat rotor on the brakes is kind of a cool design. So the disc is steel, but the inside is aluminum to take some of that weight out of that uh, and, and allow a little better heat dissipation. Okay. A little less rotating mass. You got it. Uh, from the brake perspective, we got triple piston calipers up front, duals in the rear, and when you guys get to ride, you'll feel how good those are. These things stop on a dime. Uh, I guess I missed it earlier, but it's the biggest radiator we've ever put on a Razor. Uh, we still do run the pulse width modulated fan, so it only spins as fast as it needs to. Uh, so the nice part about that, a day like today where it's, I don't know, 80 degrees outside, that fan will hardly need to spin because the cooling system sized so well on this machine. Uh, if we go back to the back now, um, one of the things that we've been asked a few times from people is, why is the drop link on the stabilizer bar so long? We do have a trick three-piece stab bar now, so you can see these aluminum castings. They go into a splined end, and then a steel bar runs across. And the reason that's so long is because we have to get this up over the clutch box, so it's really just a packaging thing. Um, if you look strength-wise, though, at the back end, you'll see this trailing arm is huge, fully boxed construction. You know, it's like quarter-inch plate steel wrapping around the wheel end. Uh, and there's huge 14 millimeter fasteners. So you see those on the trailing arm, the radius rods, the shocks, up on the front control arms. We've had to up that size to be able to handle the load and capability of these machines. Yeah. So again, you still got the uh, top hat rotors, the unitized hubs, those are all around. With big power comes big trailing arms. Yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> big power comes big trailing arms. Uh, the other thing we get asked a lot about is what the heck is this red link that's going up through the trailing arm? Uh, that's actually a tow control link. Um, so really what that's doing is as the suspension goes through its travel, it's locking the wheel in place so that it's not doing this through travel. So this actually re restricts it to about a half a degree through the full amount of travel to keep those wheels pointed straight down the trail and give you good tracking when you're going through deep woods. Uh, 29 inches of usable travel in the back, 27 up front. So more than we've ever had on a Razor. That's more than anyone has right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. that is a lot. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at strength, right, so we talk power, kind of all new driveline, you look at strength, right, mainframe, cage, suspension, you know, all the driveline upgrades we talked about, upgraded brakes, bearings, right, lots of things going on here. Uh, last one we want to hit on then is control. Uh, and the cool story about this is, you know, we got a couple different shock packages we run. Uh, being that we've got an ultimate machine sitting here, we'll talk about the internal bypass that's here right now. Um, so these are internal bypass shocks. Um, so basically, you know, inside there's a tube within a tube. Right. There's some holes drilled in that so you can bypass the oil. Uh, makes for a really good mechanical shock. But where the beauty comes in is with this dual valve setup. So when you see Dynamics DV, the DV stands for dual valve. Um, so on the Dynamics DV system, the cool thing is we've actually got two different things going on. So we're actually controlling the shocks, but we're also adjusting the steering assist in each of the modes. So four different modes on this rig. We've got Comfort, uh, Track, Rock, and Baja. And I'll give you a quick showcase if you can see what's going on with this screen on what each of those looks like. So in the Comfort mode, we basically drop compression and rebound all the way out, and we just let the wheels freely float. Okay, so it's the most comfortable ride you can get, uh, easiest motion of the wheels, and we give you a high level assist on the steering. When you tap this button for the first time, it'll pop up the mode you're in, and then when you hit it the second time, it'll shift. So the next one we got here is track mode. In this mode, we're gonna sink the ride height down a little. We're gonna actually reduce the amount of assist so you get a little better front wheel feedback. Uh, and we're gonna make it so it's really sharp reacting on cornering. So when you jump it into a corner, we're gonna stiffen up the outside, soften the inside to help keep that body as flat as we can. Uh, as we move up one more mode, this is going to take us to rock. You'll see we add a bunch of compression, drop the rebound out. We're doing that to basically bias ride height up. Um, and as you're driving around, we also try and lean the vehicle into the hill a little bit. So when you start going up those crawls, whatever's on the uphill side, we're going to try and drop the ride height. And the downhill side, we're going to try and jack it up to give you better stability. Uh, and that'll work kind of going any direction. The last mode that we've got then is Baja. And what you'll see here is it's actually different between the front and the rear. 
And what we're doing in Baja is we're actually biasing the nose to be a little higher and lighter. So when you start hitting big whoops, uh, you can you can scoot right through them and you get a chance to do that at your ride here coming up pretty soon. Awesome. Um, there's a couple other cool features that we have that we can't exactly show you, so I'll just try and explain them. So we've actually got a pitch stability control in this. So as you're getting on off the throttle, on off the brake, we're gonna stiffen up the front and rear to try and keep the body flat in a forward backward direction. So that instead of doing this going through, whoops, the body tracks nice and flat. Nice. Uh, and there's also a landing stabilization mode. So anytime the razor gets light, when you're coming back down, we're actually gonna bias the shocks or the wheels to drop out by dropping the rebound and upping the compression. And then when you hit the ground, we're basically gonna invert those to try and catch it from jumping back up off the ground. So it gives you a nice real stable feeling and keeps the wheels planted and you in control. Uh, as far as steering effort, I think I failed to mention in the rock mode, it's nice light steering effort. Uh, and in the Baja mode, it's kind of in between where it's gonna be a really neutral steering feel when you're going fast through the whoops. So power, strength, control, uh, a lot going on on the new Pro R. On the, on the Sport and Premium trims, get the Walker Evans Velocities. Okay. The Ultimates and Launch Editions, okay. uh, get the, uh, the Fox. Yeah, the so awesome. similar to a Turbo S Velocity, that got yeah. Velocities, and then we bumped up to the internal bypass uh, yeah. on the Ultimates. Same thing happens here. So what are the major differences? I mean, other than drivetrain, obviously, because we're familiar with the drivetrain that's in that car already. Yeah, so I'll say driveline differences on that versus a Pro XP. Um, so this, this engine actually gets a high flow water pump and it grafts the bigger radiator down uh, and we increase the size of the low temp radiator as well for the charge air cooling. So the cooling system is upgraded on the Turbo R versus a Pro XP. Okay. Obviously versus the Turbo S that it replaces, it gets more power, it's got the liquid sure. cooled turbo, the vented head. Uh, as you go back, the clutches will get updated tuning components uh, and they'll also get the stainless sliders that I talked about uh, here that are not present. 74 inch wide, but this has got a shorter wheelbase. Okay. Yeah. So what's this, 104, 105? This is a 96 inch oh, wheelbase. 96. The Pro-R is a 104 and a half inch okay. wheelbase. Um, other differences on the clutches, so weight springs and helix are updated for this. And then when you get back to the transmission, this gets the same upgrades the Pro-XP had. Okay. So the wider, stronger gears and the better bearings. Okay. Um, the other big difference is that we've geared low gear way down to be better in the rocks. So this has got roughly a 35 to one low. Um, so top speed and low is maybe the easier way for people to think about that. This will go almost 30 miles an hour in low. The Pro R will go just above that. They're very close in how they're set up. So real quick, uh, a summary up. Let's exclude any drivetrain on this car. Yep. Overall difference between a Pro R and a Turbo R, chassis, suspension, wheels, sure. all that. Uh, so chassis wise, the Turbo R gets a unique chassis. Um, it's also got a bolted on roll cage, so it matches the shape of a Pro XP. It's a slightly different part number because the A-pillar touchdown point is inverted. But all the accessories that fit a Pro XP cage fit a Turbo R cage. So windshields, roofs, rear panels, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, from a suspension perspective, this has got a shorter wheelbase than the Pro R. So it's got a shorter trailing arm in the back. It's got a different stabilizer bar due to the engine package. This uses one much like a Pro XP. Is it the same dimensions as a Pro uh, XP? The, the wheelbase is the same as a Pro XP. So okay, it's 96 okay. inches front okay. to back, correct. Um, so it shares the rear radius rods with the Pro R, other than the sport trim has got a, a straight lower one. The front clip is basically straight off the Pro R. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at the A arms, the shock setup, the steering, the unitized hubs, the brakes, actually even the frame section, that chunk of it, this is all basically straight from a Pro XP, other than the fact that it's got the extra radiator for the turbo in the back. Pro XP or Pro R? Same as a Pro R. The front is the frame, the same as a Pro R. Yes. Okay. Okay, yes. so basically the biggest upgrade that the Pro Turbo R got was uh, suspension in the front end. So huge and suspension what? upgrades in the front end, and, and, and. lots of strength upgrades to go out. Okay, okay. And it also gets big, you know, the longer travel suspension in the rear as well, right? Because it's 74 inch wide instead of 64 sure. on a Pro XP. Yeah. Yep, and then, uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities. You know, if you kind of understand that, you understand a Pro XP, oh, yeah. you're going to piece them together, you're gonna to understand everything going on yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And then kind of in the middle third of the vehicle, so anything on the interior in the cockpit, this stuff is all the same across Pro XP, Turbo R, and Pro R. Yeah. So, you know, seats with the angle adjustment, the sliders, the extra leg room, uh, the steering wheel with the tilt and telescoping, you know, gauging, ride command, audio systems. The way it sits The way low, it's, yeah, exactly. All the like cup holders that are easy to access. They yep. took my advice, I would like to take credit for the glove box not being 75 miles deep anymore. <laughs> and for also somebody designing a car that I could reach the pedals out of. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I had a mic, I would drop it. But. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I think driveline wise, the other thing to be aware of is, so because the Turbo R replaces the Turbo S, this uses the same style front drive as the Turbo S. So flip the switch down for two wheel, flip it up for all wheel drive. It's about a 3% overdrive ratio, so it's still really good in technical yeah, rides. When you guys get to go on ride, there's a pretty good whoop section out there, and like you'll initially probably like tense up and buck it up, and you'll float right through. <laughs> wow. We are getting ready to go on our ride. Pat just told me that since we drove seven hours to get here and seven hours home, 14 hours to drive for a one hour ride, that we are getting a free razor! That's malarkey. He didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. He I was absolutely trying, I was just kidding. Try. I was try. going with it to see what happened. <laughs> can't, can't. Anyway, so what we're doing is that we're getting ready to head out on our ride. We're at Glamis North. We're doing the Polaris Think Outside the Box, I'm assuming. No, Think Outside. Think outside. Oh, just Think Outside. So, yeah. Yeah. so Pat's been awesome. He has taken us through this car inch by inch, uh, patiently, as extremely knowledgeable because he his title is? Director of Product Planning for Razor. That's why. We call him the um, DPPR, the Dipper. <laughs> and the Dipper here has let us know everything there is to know about this car, so hopefully you've enjoyed us sharing that with you. And now we're gonna go for a ride, which we're also gonna share with you because we're gonna go hit the sand slash dirt. We hear cars coming back. We gotta suit up. I gotta get my race gear on. It's I have to wear a fire suit because they know how fast I drive. Peace out. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go.